do to affect your children who attend our school district. This will not be a very long presentation, but it will be hopefully informative. We have a lot to share. We'll do a brief review of some of the things that occurred this year. We'll do a longer version of what has been planned and is, has started to go into effect, or will go into effect when school starts. And then we'll talk to you about our goals for the future. <clears throat> it's been 11 months since I had the honor of being hired in the Hepatitis Borough School District. During that time, it was vital for me to listen, to learn from people, to observe, and to evaluate. And I did it with all the groups that are listed on that particular page. I listened to parents, and I got great input, and I discovered a large coterie of parents who really care about their kids. That's vital. I listened to teaching staff members and administrators. I learned a great deal from them about what it's like in their classrooms, about what challenges they face, and about what we might be able to do about it. I met with just about everybody who's an official in the community. I had more meetings than you could shake a stick at, and I talked to the mayor, the police chief, the people from the Warriors, everybody I could get my hands on. And I learned from them what the community feels about the school district and what I could do to improve it. I worked closely with the Board of Education. Speaking of the devil, how are you, sir? <laughs> Charlie. Board of Education has become a very cohesive unit. And I'm very proud of that. We've been working hard to make sure that we work together. And I did learn from the mayor. The mayor has a very interesting and, and strong grasp on the town. And his heart is in the right place. And I met many members of the council interacted with them. So the bottom line is, in my 11 months, I had plenty of resources to listen to, to learn from, to observe, and then I began to evaluate. A lot of stuff happened in my 11 months, but it has nothing to do with my position. It has to do with all of us because I do nothing unless I get the input. I do nothing unless I'm comfortable that I'm doing what people want me to do. Now, can you ever have 100% of the people agree with you? The answer absolutely is no. But a lot of the stuff we did, we had a strong backing. So for example, items one and two, I received significant input from parents about gifted and talented programs at the elementary school. I received a great deal of input about the report card change that went to a standard-based report card. I discussed these with the principals. I believe the principals will tell you I do not direct. I ask them for their opinion. I often and mo most often leave the decision to them. So it was the principals who agreed that the traditional report card might be a better choice than the one we were using for standard base. The principals agreed that we needed to increase the scope of the gifted and talented programs, and I'll tell you, they, it increased greatly, and the principals did one heck of a job, along with the teaching staff members, to make sure that we served that input. <clears throat> one of the things I learned is that we needed a formal phonics program at what is now Durban Avenue for kindergarten and first grade kids. And if we need it at Tulsa, for some kids, we will have both of those because that is vital. If we're trying to teach kids to read, they must master phonics. They must have phonemic awareness in their heads and in their hearts. So I'm very proud 
that the principals recruited the reading specialists to come up with a formal phonics program and they will train the staff on how to use it. That is not to say that phonics has not been taught, but a formal program puts everyone on the same page and was picked by the experts. That's vital. <clears throat> One of the things I learned was that the Hudson Maxim School, who, which has served the community very well, was somewhat decrepit. And I plan to recommend to close the school in June. And lo and behold, we had an emergency. I know some of you still don't believe that. But we did have an emergency in which the steam pipes underneath the floor were letting steam go and the floor was hot. And if you touched the handles of the doors where the casing of the door weighs, they were hot. I called up Mr. Fasano, the board president, on a Thursday afternoon. I said, Anthony, I have to close Hudson Maxim School. He said, I know, June 30th. I said, no, today. <laughs> I was amazed at the trust I was given by the Board of Education on that. And to this day, I will never forget the community effort that went into the four days we moved 25 classroom, or 24 classroom. I was wearing a hoodie on Sunday when I came to help, and I was glad I was because I had to hide my emotions. I was touched by the fact that teachers, administrators, Parents, grandparents, and just people who heard that we were doing this came down to help. <clears throat> One of the highlights of my 47-year career. <clears throat> I recommended a reconfiguration of the district. We had to reconfigure a little early when we moved Hudson Maxim, and then we reconfigured again. So think of the kindergarten and first grade teachers. They've reconfigured twice in six months, God bless them. They do it well. So we now have a four school district that is set up in a way that will best serve our students, I believe. And putting the eighth grade at the high school, something that I've done in other districts and tried to do in my last couple of districts and got nowhere with, in a meeting just like this, people questioned, questioned, and questioned. And a large majority of them agreed that it was a good move. So our eighth graders will be at the high school. We'll describe some of the experiences we're planning for them. Especially so when we come to new high school initiatives. I'm not going to talk about them right now because there's one asterisk on the high school initiatives. Now I'll, I'll explain that in a few minutes. I'll explain it right now because the next thing has to do with the selling of the cell tower easement. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1964, the Board of Education decided to buy what was the Hapakon Country Club, a golf course. To this day, the board owns 100 plus acres up there and somebody made a good decision to build a cell tower on it and lease it. So the board gets about $80,000 a year from the company that runs the cell tower. And lo and behold, they decided they might like to buy it. So we went through the legal process of putting out bids. They had offered us $1.5 million. By sending it out to bid, we got competitors. And the final sales price is $2.1 million. The problem is, it's not a major problem, I don't think, but it's not done yet because by law, we have to give them 60 days to make a final decision. Now the company that bid on it is the company that runs it, so I'm rather comfortable that they're going to give us a check, actually two checks. I asked for half the money this fiscal year, half the money next fiscal year. That's just accounting. <clears throat> But I can't, I won't find out until September 20 something, and it's slowly killing me. It's <laughs> torturous. But if we, if we finalize that sale, then I have the grace, by the grace of the board, permission to use some of that money 
for new initiatives at the high school. And those new initiatives will include a construction skills program. The new initiatives will include a cosmetology program. The new initiatives will include additional AP courses. The new initiatives will improve the athletic facility, mainly in terms of equipment. The money will also be used for things that we desperately need in other schools, such as air conditioning at the middle school, in case you happen to work there. So there's a great deal of anticipation. The difficulty was I was hoping to get that money in the summer and begin things sooner. So I am stuck in a legal bind of waiting, and it's not much fun. We'll talk more about high school initiatives as we go on. <clears throat> One of the things I learned we had to do was reconfigure the administrative team. For a district of 1,500 students, the administrative team was large. It is not easy to lay people off. Nevertheless, that was a tough recommendation I had to make. <clears throat> One of the things that we planned and that we will have done is expand after school activities for, four, for grades four and seven and at the high school. So for example, fourth and fifth graders will now be able to take advantage of almost all of the middle school activities and club. Not quite all, but almost all. At the high school, we are starting these new initiatives right away. It has to do with the club. Mr. Piccarello is just hired. He's here two and a half weeks. He's working his butt off. Joe, could you go over to high school clubs for me, sir? Sure. Hi everyone. <laughs> I'm I'm Joe Piccarillo. Um, I uh, I can I can quickly list the clubs for you, but I must say I've been here a little over two weeks and I'm having a great time getting to know a lot of you. Um, we are working together full 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 steam ahead, uh, pun intended, because uh, steam is one of the clubs that we're uh, we've done. The high school, um, one of the big initiatives the district's done over the last several years. So at the high school, you have eighth and ninth grade intramurals that are going to be developing. You have a, a robotics club, STEAM club, a cultural horizons club, a dance club. You have art club, future teachers uh, club, and national arts honor society club. So those are all clubs that are going to be emerging at the high school. The middle school, you also have intramurals. We have a STEAM innovators club. Drama Club, the uh, Student Council, Academic Bowl, Lego Robotics. I mean, there, there is a, a large list. And what's nice about it, when you start looking at the clubs, you get a Future Teachers Club at the middle school, a Future Teachers Club at the high school. You're getting robotics at the middle school. You're getting robotics at the high school. So one of the main steam in both, one of the main initiatives that we're going to be looking at is ways to align vertically from grades, really from pre-K through 12 as a unified district, but most specifically 4 through 12 as one big alignment. So that's one thing we're really excited to see. One of the other items that is accomplished is the expansion of Alphabest, which will include grades uh, four to seven uh, at the middle school. <clears throat> Some of you emailed me 30 or 40 times about playgrounds at the middle school and at Durban Avenue, and both of those playgrounds are in built. One, uh, one has to have mulch laid down, but I'm very pleased with that. Mr. Mr. Geary is the facilities gentleman. A, no mold this summer because of him. B, B the job he has done coordinating the reconfiguration is excellent. C, is he going to be finished with everything before the, that first day of school? No. There are going to be a few smart boards not hung up, but all the classrooms will be ready. There will be boxes in the gym. There will be some leftover shelving, but we will be ready to go so that your kids can have an experience. I love the idea that we're starting the day, the, the year on a Friday. Some people question that. A, we gave the teachers an extra day 
to organize their classrooms. That's why we have three days before the kids come in. And B, the Friday, the first day of school is a energy burning experience. You have children exhausted and adults exhausted. And the idea of getting one day in to learn some of the procedures and expectations and then be able to sleep a little late on Saturday is not a bad thing. One of the things that was not accomplished this year but will start to be accomplished, and Mr. Benfati is responsible for this, he started recognizing his staff. He was on the front page of Herald, his big shoe award, and we will be recognizing all staff members who have put in 15 years, 10 years, 20 years, I'm not sure about 10, 15, 20, and 25. We'll be, we'll be doing that. Miss Katie, who is Joe and I's excellent administrative assistant, has made arrangements for that, and uh, that will be taking place in the near future. <clears throat> Item 14 is so vital that I can't stress it enough. Social, emotional learning. What is that? That is a catchphrase these days, and we're trying our best to make sure that we arm our students, some of whom come from very challenging circumstances, we're trying to arm them with the ability to cope from anxiety, depression. It is not an easy task, but it is a vital task. Ladies and gentlemen, if you give me a choice, if I have the entire fifth grade is going to take the same English language arts exam at the end of the school year, and you tell me I can teach English, English language arts four hours a day to help them do well on that test, or you gave me a choice of social emotional learning programs to help kids cope, I would choose the programs, not the four hours. That's how vital this is. Our kids are challenged by a society that is not friendly. And I never thought I'd be happy to be 68 years old, but I am. And I worry about my grandchildren and I worry about my kids because we are in an ugly phase of existence. Helping kids cope is vital. So we have a bunch of programs coming in. I have the prosecutor's office coming in to do a presentation in November at night for adults. I have a number of organizations, the Center for Prevention, some of you may have heard of that, excellent program out of Newton, coming in to work with the middle school students, because Mr. Benfati understands that sixth and seventh graders need work in the SEL area, and Ms. Tr Ms. Hens also understands it, so the co-principals at your middle school are championing programs from experts to come in and work with kids. This is vital. And there are a number of times I'm going to mention this as we go on because some of the initiatives we have include bringing in expert organizations to assist us in that role. Give me a happy student who feels safe Give me a happy student who feels that he or she is listened to. Give me a child who can self-actualize and deal with a situation because they're thinking, that's a kid who's going to pass the test because the kid is comfortable. <coughs> so my, my first message, I will speak to the faculty next week. I have yet to stand in front of the full faculty because I started after this after school started, but my message to the faculty will be, I need heroes. I need champions of children. I want you to be an expert when you teach math, but I want you to be a champion. And let me tell you, if you don't know our staff, I will tell you we have a lot of champions. I'm very proud of that. That's why I'm glad to be We had some changes over the summer. We didn't budget for a new art teacher, but we needed one. 
the reconfiguration has influenced the schedule a little bit. We didn't budget for an MH class, a multiple handicap class teacher, but our numbers are up. And it is very important to me and Ms. Miller to educate as many of our kids as possible within the confines of our four schools. So we started a second MH program. And next month, I will recommend to the Board of Education the hiring of a construction teacher, finding a construction skills teacher is like a needle in a haystack. Very difficult to find. The old industrial arts certification is pretty much obsolete, and most of the young people taking what used to be industrial arts are going towards technology. Miss Katie said, Art, isn't there an organization of these guys? I said, check it out. And she did, and I'll be darned, the next day we got a resume. Same as we found a school nurse. Sure you're not interested in something. <laughs> Same as we found the school nurse, Miss Katie contacted the County Nurses Association and again we got somebody immediately. So it's a pretty it's a pretty interesting experience working in Hapakon. We also have new courses at the high school. Remember our job at the high school when I first started talking to everybody, it's supposed to be a comprehensive high school. We need to serve the four-year college, the two-year college. The kids who go to work, kids who go in the military. We need to serve everybody. Joe, would you be kind enough to elaborate on the new courses at the high school? Sure. The, uh, there are several new courses at the high school, so we, and, and you'll see a lot of them are tied to the board uh, vision statement and goals, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but you have a climatology course, a biosustainability course, a course on the design process, which is which is a design process meaning like engineering. Um, we have a robotics course. This is this is a good course. I, I think it's probably, find it very interesting. United States history through the arts. You have an AP art history, AP French language and culture, and uh, a principles of engineering course. So these are these are all new courses of high school. Not all of them will run in September. Some of them are semester courses, Correct. and will run the second part of the year. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, our enrollment problems are in the process of being changed. Yesterday, we had 11 students enroll in our district. Today, we had more. I do believe, I can't wait for the first day of school when I can take a count, I do believe that our enrollment <coughs> is going to be up on the upswing a little bit. I say that cautiously. But things are happening. Today we had two choice students come back to district. <laughs> Nothing makes me happier than something like that. Many of our newcomers come from other countries. We have a large group of children from Colombia. Yesterday we had a child who speaks Burmese from, how do you say that word? Myanmar. Myanmar, yeah. Joe knows, Joe's a better pronunciator. <laughs> I am thrilled, and if you see our school signs that welcome, it also says it in Spanish, because we have a more significant number of Latino kids. And that means we have a bigger number of Latino families. So one of the clubs Joe mentioned, has to do with a cultural club, because it is my intent to make sure that we welcome all newcomers with open arms. That is our job, and I and I, I know this community would support that. Just so you, I, you'll find I, I want to interrupt him very often, and I, I'll restrain myself, so um, I want to ask, is it, is it 30, 31 students, we, we ELL had, students the last, like, Six months or something wild. When I got here, we had about nine ESL students, English as a second language, kids who came to us who don't speak English or can't pass a test to demonstrate proficiency in English. So we have programs. We're up to 31, just like uh, Latino kids. And that doesn't count the kids who registered in the last few weeks. So 
The next item is we have to double ESL services. <clears throat> Normally I would not know much about ESL, but my wife was an ESL teacher. I know more than I ever want to know about ESL. <laughs> Children learn the language magnificently fast. It is unbelievable. And the teachers are specially trained. They don't have to speak the same language as the children. There are methodologies they use to teach children English. So much so that kids, some kids test out in the very first year. It's very impressive. So we're welcoming our newcomers and I am just delighted that the enrollment situation is beginning to shift. I mentioned SEL again. All right, so a child in our school district demonstrates that he or she might be in danger of hurting himself. Traditionally, we send them to St. Clair's Hospital. The family gets a very big bill. That causes a problem for the school. So we have a, an organization that I discovered called Tri-County Behavioral. They came to my office, we met, and they said, Mr. D, we don't have a situation where finance is gonna keep somebody from getting services. So they'll do a needs assessment, $100. They'll do a needs assessment, whether or not they send the child back to school, or if the child needs higher order of care, they'll refer the child to the higher order of care. Now, I've seen bills my parents have brought bills in for a needs assessment for a, for a, a potential suicide. A lot of money. I've seen worse bills for, we sent, sent the kid for a drug test, up to $2,000. So I'm working on a drug test because that's not, that's not appropriate. We need to find a way in which to serve our community better. <clears throat> so not, not necessarily on this list, Last week, I met with a group that runs, this is a little bit of a dream, but bear with me. I found a group that runs health clinics in school districts in New Jersey. And it means partnership with the county agency that caters to Medicaid patients for, at, at a reduced or no cost. So I am trying to work a partnership out. Zufall, Z-U-F-A-L-L, -L, is the group in Newton, but Newton's not close. So I am, I'm in the infant stages of trying to work out a situation where we have the potential of one night a week or two nights a week having health services in our schools for people who need it. Similarly with Tri-County, I have asked them if they would be willing to assign a counselor to, to, to our office so that parents don't have to ride to Sparta or Morristown or Randolph, that the service will be right in town. That's, that's a little bit of a dream, but that's a good possibility. The other item is a, is a <clears throat> I did promise you that eighth graders would be able to take high school credits, and that promise has, will come through. But, as of September, students who take algebra or the advanced Spanish class will be able to earn high school credits. And that's a good thing because we have, with the Board of Education's assistance and cooperation, we have raised the number of credits for high school graduation for the incoming freshman class to 140 credits. One of the, one of the, one of the input devices I got from parents had to do with we only require 122.5 credits. Are we preparing our kids right? And I think they had a good point. <clears throat> that sort of summarizes stuff that is ready to go. And I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about our goals and what we're exploring. The Board of Education had a special meeting in August and passed a set of goals that I'm going to ask Mr. Figarillo to share with you, just for your information, 
He has promised not to take a long time because he will paraphrase, not read. That was subtle, right? He, he, he doesn't want me to go on long. But um, I was super excited that my first meeting on, um, with the board was a goals meeting because it really helped me to see the, the pulse of the community and the board and the direction that they were intending to go. I was encouraged because a lot of it mirrored the vision statement that's been on our website for quite some time. So if you haven't seen it in a while, I, I would encourage you to go. It, it talks about all the innovation and 21st century learning, um, addressing all students, all things that we really believe in. So there were five goals. First goal is a curriculum five-year plan. In looking at our, our curriculum, uh, a lot of initiatives have come and gone. A lot of standards have come, national standards, local standards. Some curriculum has been updated, but some curriculum still needs updating. So we're going to go through uh, course by course, subject area by subject area, and we're going to make a five-year uh, plan for that. Um, the ones that need immediate attention in order to be up to date in terms of compliance, we'll, we will address immediately. And then we will go through five-year cycle of revision. So that's our priority number one. Um, number two, we're going to be looking at job descriptions and organizational charts and processes uh, that we follow district-wide from the central office through buildings. Part of this is because with the reconfiguration and different staff and different buildings, and I've been told, I, now I don't know if this stat is accurate, someone will correct me, but I've heard seven superintendents in the past 11 years. So when you have turnover like that, there's going to be a lot of processes that people are not exactly sure what the correct process and procedure is. So it's my intention and the intention of the Board of Education that we iron those out through uh, a careful look at job descriptions and organizational charts. Um, the third is related to what Mr. D spoke about earlier, which is uh, you have the cell tower sale uh, pending. You have the Hudson Maxim sale, which will hopefully go through this, this school year. That's going to be an influx of cash into the district. It's important for the Board of Education, it's important for me and Mr. D to be really transparent about how we're going to be using those funds. So we intend on really being specific, aligning the, those funds towards goals and mission statements that the Board of Education has already committed to, and being really clear with the community. So that's, that's our third um, important goal. Fourth is related to climate, related to SEL. And so Mr. D was talking about that. Now, SEL, I know we have a lot of educators in the room, is, is an education buzzword, <coughs> social emotional learning, but it has other, other names that go along with it that if you're not an educator, you might have heard of these. You hear self-regulation, uh, coping strategies, mindfulness. Um, these, these, these are all working synonymously uh, for all intents and purposes. So we need to prepare students um, for social emotional learning part because of what Mr. D said about the changing, just uh, cultural change that we've experienced, but also part of it is related to the changing demographic. So we have a heightened special education population. We have a heightened lower socioeconomic uh, group. We have a heightened uh, Latino, Hispanic population coming in. These are all, uh, creates a, uh, heterogeneous community that we have not experienced here at this level. So that means different folks interacting, different ways of understanding that dynamic. So some of that can be accomplished through social emotional learning. And then the last is related to a long-term facilities plan. So we need to look at all the facilities in the district, systematically determine which things need to be improved to maintain compliance and safety. That's number one. But then, we, we definitely know schools that are in need of updating from a cosmetic point of view, and we want to address that. Part of that can come through this influx of cash, which we'll share with the public, but we want to be very purposeful and intentional about how we make these choices. Trust me, this guy never intends on leaving the school district. I, I never intend on leaving the school district. We want to stay here for, for a long time, so we want to make decisions that are really thought out. No one wants to make a decision for, for what's most politically expedient in the moment. So we're committed to those in our five goals. And that was, I, I don't know, two minutes? Not bad. Three minutes.
Race Facility Plan that Joe mentioned, I need I need the audience to understand. You may recall that last year the district was refunded with state aid cut. That money immediately went into what's called capital reserve, which means we can only use it for capital projects. The district also received a hundred thousand dollar insurance check for the mold, which we were expecting. What we didn't expect was accomplished by our insurance broker, whose name is George Morville, out of Newton. George came to the office one day with a check for $565,000 and said, we got the insurance money for the mold. So all of that money is in capital reserve. So we are finally able, and the board, when I got here, the board had excellent amount of money in capital reserve diminished by, by the mold. I was impressed that they had the money there to lay out. But we're back where we were, and our intent is we need to prioritize what we're going to do in the buildings, especially the middle school, which was requiring air conditioning, especially the high school roof over the auditorium, the music room, in desperate need of repair. So the board has given us the opportunity to start looking for an architect, and those projects will come about. <clears throat> We have obstacles, yes. We still continue, to, we will still continue to get state aid cuts. This year, I believe we did pretty well considering we got a $1.1 million cut in state aid. Next year, I believe the amount we're going to be cut is $880,000, and the year after that, $2.2 million. So if you have some ambition, it's time to write your politicians. I wrote a magnificent letter to the New Jersey Herald, but it was over 300 words. They would not print it. <laughs> the regional news used some of it. I was very honored. So I need activism because I can survive another $880,000 cut. The board will not let me use, understandably so, revenue from a cell tower to sustain the regular budget. It's for new stuff. We got creative this year. There was no tax increase because of the schools, despite the $1.1 million. Very proud of that. We'll continue to try to do that. There is legislation which may limit the state aid cuts or extend them. God only knows what will happen. But that is a major obstacle for us. And we must overcome it. We have no choice. <clears throat> because the formula to fund schools has changed. <clears throat> so the second obstacle we need to overcome has to do with finalizing the cell tower. I need that money to fancy up that building. That building, whatever it is. <clears throat> Same with the Hudson Maxim sale. We put the Hudson Maxim sale up out to bid. By law, we have to put it out to bid. The board asked me to put a million dollar minimum bid on it. We got no bids. The board has now asked me to rebid a second time for $750,000. There's possibly a chance we'll get a bid on that. If not, after two bids, you can sell it just like you might sell your an old house or something like that. My biggest obstacle personally is choice. I abhor the fact that 64 of my high school kids who should be here go to Lenape Valley High School. I have no, I have no question that Lenape Valley doesn't have an excellent program, but no choice school was picked by criteria which said they were superior. Anybody who applied got it. And that's not subject to change. So I asked the state when we went down to Trenton, thank God Joe was there because I may not have made it back. I asked them, are these schools choice schools for perpetuity? Apparently they are, because they have no intention of allowing more schools to go in. I said, I know some choice schools are dropping out. Can districts that are not choice schools apply and become choice schools? 
No. I said this is an outrage. I already met with Senator Oroho on the topic, and I will be calling him again. Because this is elitist, unfair, it possibly borders on racist. And I'll tell you this, they don't take our special education students. They take among our best. Not every child is among our best, but many of them are. I talked to Mrs. Phil today, who I respect greatly. She explained to me that in a recent year, 13 of her advanced placement kids, of her advanced class kids, ended up in a choice school. So my job, my biggest job right now, has nothing to do with money, has nothing to do with selling schools. My job right now is to make people believe in her PACCOM so we maintain our good kids and any kid. We take them all. That's my job. <coughs> That's what I will be dedicating myself to. And I'm going to have fun with it. But, but to, to answer the question more specifically, the state has, imagine the state has the same pile of money the state's always had. What they've done is they've reallocated it. And there are school districts, like ours, that have experienced the decline in enrollment. And what they, the state has done is has, have taken what they would consider our, us as overfunded for the past several years. That's, that's what they would say. And now they're moving it to what they're calling historically underfunded, mostly urban areas. Now, there's a problem with that, of course. Um, and that is, it doesn't take into account a lot of things like special ed population, which is much more expensive. Um, and the truth of the matter is, when you look at the state funding, and, and the board president said this specifically at the last meeting, we had a 30% decrease in enrollment over the last 10 years. The board recognized that we'd probably receive less state aid. But the board prepared for not 30% state aid reduction, 50% state aid reduction. So the board was very fiscally responsible in terms of planning. But we didn't lose 30, we didn't lose 50, we lost 90% of our state. So that's why when Mr. D gets upset and, 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 and angry, that's what he's, he's talking about. Um, but to paint a, a happier picture, yes, we're frustrated about state aid cuts. Yes, we're frustrated about choice. But here's what we're going to lean into. We're going to lean into choice. I, I want us, I, I don't care who, where, who's a choice school district, because I want Hopacon to be our students' choice. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to revamp curriculum. We're going to, we are going to make it very competitive. With, I, I am not afraid of Lenape Valley. I'm not afraid of their curriculum or their offerings. I'm excited to compete. I'm very competitive. So I can't wait to, to have a curriculum and to have programs where I can go and speak to them and say, what do you got? I am looking forward to this. So I do not see this as doom and gloom. I look at it as a call to action and a call to energy and enthusiasm. So we're not shying away from the competition. It's on. It's on. Well stated. Thank you. <laughs> We only have two questions. I must have done one heck of a job Do you want to hit concurrence, it. boss? Hmm? Do you want to hit concurrence and some of these grants? What did I miss? The whole page. Where, <laughs> Where am I? You're so good. Did that <laughs> That's why I need him. I can't see anything. What page are you I can go through it in two minutes. All right, I'll go through it quick. So uh, you'll see two bullet points on 1920 goals and exploration. So numbers two and three talks about concurrent credits. We have concurrent credits through Sussex County Community College already. I believe there's six or seven classes that are concurrent. That's great. That's great. They give us $75 a credit, which is about a third of the price it would cost. That's wonderful. It's big savings for our kids. What we want to do is we want to, we want to hit that even harder. So I would like to see it get up to 15 classes that could be for concurrent. And I don't want to just limit to Sussex County Community College, although there's a huge coterie of our students that go to Sussex County Community College. I also want to hit William Patterson. 
So we've been in conversations with SECC and William Patterson. We're trying to do 15 classes in each. Now, these are different classes. So 15 concurrent to William Patterson, and I'll add, those are $100 of credit at William Patterson. So that's 20% that's of the cost. So that's a $400 per credit saving. Now, the state, New Jersey Department of Education's goal for this year is to have every high school have students graduating with six college credits. Now, it's our dream, and, I, and it's not such a pipe dream. It's, it could be, in actuality, a few years from now, would be to have kids approximate an associate's degree while in Hopatka High School. Now, if you're doing that with Sussex County Community College concurrent courses, that means they're taking classes during their high school day that they're getting college credits for. If we do that, we're talking about savings that is over $20,000 in savings in just tuition. Now that doesn't mention, that doesn't mention room and board savings because if, I don't know if you have students that go to Rutgers or to any state school, but the room and board gets you just as bad as tuition. So we're talking savings that could be upwards of $30,000, $40,000 if students take advantage of all those opportunities. So that's very exciting to me. CTE programs, help, help cut me off. CTE programs is another initiative we're looking at, and it ties to this academy idea that's being championed at the high school. A way to think of it is the academies are basically like majors. So you're choosing a major in high school, so you're choosing groups of courses you take in sequential order that build an expertise and interest while you're in school. It's great. It's great for kids. It keeps them engaged. There's a lot of statistics that show they come to school more often. They do, they do better academically in school when they're in these types of models. CTE is a type of major just like that. It includes three course sequence. It includes a third party assessment which could be like a certificate program, college credits, internships, and a, uh, what they call a, uh, it, it, well, it's, it's, it's like a club, a club that's tied to a CTE program. They call it a CTSO, uh, Career and Technical Student Organization. So essentially, students go through their high school uh, career, and they can pick up a CTE, Career and Technical Education Cert. Not only is it great because it picks up concurrent credits, it picks up um, employable skills that can get them jobs after school, but it also ties with it a lot of grant funding, federal grant funding. Although the state aid has been reduced, federal grant money related to Perkins and career and technical education has been renewed by the federal government and continues to be supported by state and federal uh, politicians. So that is a good sign for us, in, and we are uh, we, we, we really can, can be great, a great community for CTE. Hope Hacken is a perfect community for CTE. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and part of that is tied to, Mr. B mentioned, cosmetology, construction. These are all career and technical education type programs. I can see if I hold it. This is good. <laughs> One of the items we're exploring is an after school after a care program for autistic children. Meeting with a representative next week that has uh, is a funded, federally funded program. Doesn't cost the district anything, but it serves our clientele who have children who are classified as autistic. And uh, I was supposed to meet with them tomorrow. They had to postpone, so I'm gonna put it off till next week. But that's a, you know, we do have an aftercare program for our kids. We should have an aftercare program for all our kids. That's the theme, everybody. I guess cut 30 seconds on a ski grid. All right, someone, someone's going <laughs> to clock me on this. All right. 30 seconds. I'm going to, so we have an opportunity. The National Winter Activity Center is located in Vernon. It, some of you may remember uh, Hidden Valley. Um, that is the that's the uh, the, the, the old um, the, the old ski slope there. So what they're they're giving us an opportunity now. It's a nonprofit. 
the opportunity is for middle schoolers to go to uh, six sessions. They're evening sessions. They would take them from school. They'd take them to Vernon and back. They would get dinner. They would get ski rentals. They would get lessons, individual lessons. And they would get um, also winter jackets and winter pants if they didn't have them to wear there. This, would, this is normally for six sessions, including all in, $450 a kid. I got a grant that would be reduced to just $100 a kid. So they're going to subsidize this $350. So this is a six-week program. It's a really great opportunity. So I spoke with, with both your middle school principals. We've created a survey that are going to go out to the community to see how many students might be interested in such a thing. And this would be in February, March time. So I think it's a great opportunity uh, for our students. Now, there's another grant here, the BASF grant, and that grant is tied to robotics. So BASF is um, an organization that is located, I believe, there uh, just about an hour from here. Um, so they do grants, competitive grants, at, uh, for, I think there's maybe 20 of them, $5,000. So we apply um, with the idea of doing a robotics program. Um, there is a program first uh, technology challenge. It's called FIRST. It's a, the FIRST technology challenge is a program that's open for students in grades 7 through 12. A lot of the robotics is from 9 to 12, but because we have 8th grade high school, this is a really nice fit for us. So FIRST is really nationally recognized as a premier robotics competition. I just wrote the grant today. My fingers are crossed. We find out mid-October. So we will continue to apply for these grants as we see them. And I would invite everyone here to please tell your friends, let me know, let Mr. D know if you find out of grants. And every company gives out some sort of grant. So let me know. My card is over there. I invite you to take it. And just send me emails if you hear something, we'll apply. have a more formal manner in which to gain input from representatives of each school, regular ed teacher, special ed teacher, a union member, uh, along with administrators, Joe and myself. The last item that we're, go we're going to try to continue to improve has to do with Mr. Hollenbeck's responsibility of safety and security. Okay. Uh, he is well in tune with the rules, regulations, and laws. They passed a law, for example, which says we must have an emergency uh, ability to communicate with the outside world from the classrooms. However, and the state, the voters passed the funding for it, but they haven't established a manner in which to give out the money yet. So we're working on that. But that is a concern that, that we have. I must say that Mr. H is uh, an excellent resource for that. If you ever have concerns about safety or security, I will put you in touch with them. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two questions. Why did a high school and middle school get out at 1.55 p.m.? The reason is they start early, and the reason is that they start early has to do with the fact that our buses are shared with other districts. So after they drop our kids off, they go to elementary schools that start a little later, but in order to do that, we have to start a certain time. That is, that is the situation. One reason why we increase clubs and increase alphabets is for that very reason. In terms of looking for another bus company, there's only one other bus company in the area, and it's First Student. First Student is a good operation across the country Prices tend to be more expensive. We would have to rebid all of our routes. I don't know the exact rules and regs on bus routes, but you can keep them going every year, almost forever, if you increase them by the price of inflation. To rebid is a gigantic, costly challenge. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, in terms of peanut butter, um, 
there are peanut-free uh, classrooms. Kids can have peanut butter in the cafeteria. There are peanut-free tables in the cafeteria. Those are the only questions I got tonight. I got five. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. These are all from your age. No, they're all from me. <laughs> Ski club for all students in middle school. Financial needed. <coughs> financial information needed for the grant. So now that the schools are redistributed a little bit, is it every student that's currently attending middle school? And then you said there was a grant attached that included some kind of uniform, a coat, and pan. So yes. financial As part of the ski. Joe, what were the grades for the ski? We have four through seven. It's okay, eligible. So for the four. whole middle school? Correct. Okay, and does financial aid, does that um, require financial information? No. Okay, that's for every student. All Correct. students would okay. pay $100, not the $450. Okay. Now, they're not going to give uh, coats and pants to anyone, but they're not going to ask financial information. I just need to know to let them know. They're yeah. not going to. Order them all and then have everybody come with jackets. But it's not a uniform. No, it's not a uniform. Okay. No, not at all. Okay, well, the recent increase in enrollment changed state cuts. I'm predicting an increase in enrollment. It will not change the state cuts, but hopefully it will give us more kids to work with. But I'll, I'll let you know in my next meeting where we are enrollment wise. New high school initiatives, Cosmo Construction. Are these academies available as electives? Will that bring students back from both tech? What is the cost savings per student? Interestingly, um, when Joe and I worked together in another district, we did bring students back from tech with some of these programs we're talking about. I'm not trying to take away. Tech has some great programs we cannot duplicate, okay? But there are some programs that a comprehensive high school can run successfully. So a cosmetology lab, you get the right person to run it has the ability to um, has the ability to teach kids, get them certified, and immediately employed, and that's a specialty. Construction skills is a little more broad. Okay, kids are learning skills that hopefully will assist them in getting jobs. But part of the course has to do with what do you do to get a job? What are the soft skills you need to impress somebody who's hiring laborers and stuff like that? We had, one, we had a union come up and talk to our kids in the construction course. Big, gruff guy said, says to the kids, I got a million dollars. The kid's looking like he's crazy. He saved his money all his life in the union, and he has a, he has a 403B with a million dollars in it. One of our kids went to the union that he came from, started off at, was it $17 an hour? $17 an hour. The day after we graduated high school, one of the other C one of the other CTE programs we're working on is for kids who reach the age of 18. It is a CDL truck driver program, cooperating with the college. We're going to need when we start these programs. We're going to need tradesmen <coughs> from the town to be to serve as an advisory committee. So hopefully that rings a bell, and you know somebody who might be interested. Have them pay attention because we can use them. So this, this whole process is a, is a full community engagement. We're finding need in the community. We're trying to figure out how to serve that need through the schools. So it would be silly for us to have all these programs that we would prepare students for jobs that don't exist, or prepare them to, to have to then move out of Hopaka, right? There are so many jobs in need in our community. So we can't be tone deaf to this. We have to help fund our economy and help each other. That's the way this works. So you, uh, many of you would have gotten an email already from me today, which is a survey, because part of our expansion possibilities with SCCC is the idea of possibly running a satellite campus for SCCC from Hopakon High School at night, which would include adult ed education classes, finishing your associate's degree, um, all, all from Hopakon High School. So I would really encourage you all to fill out that interest survey. Nothing, nothing has been set in motion yet. I want, I want you to fill it out to see if that's an interest. And if it is, again, Mr. B's talking, we're a comprehensive school district. We need to do a comprehensive job of serving. I have a great question here. It has to do with high school kids having trouble with schedules. 
having difficulty getting the class they need. Because our high school is down to 400 students, we can't offer a significant number of duplicate special classes. So if I'm taking, if I want to take AP French, but I also want to take history through the arts, there's a chance that they're only offered once a day, the same period. And that presents a problem for kids. How do you fix that? You get more kids in the school. Of course, then you need to have more. more it's a great question. Question, how many kids are choice other than Lenape? The number is very small. Lenape is our, is our strongest um, magnet, so to speak. We have a few elementary kids who go to choice schools. Some districts allow employees to bring their children to their school district, and they count them as choice. We have a few cases like that. But elementary, but the elementary um, you get more, more kids go to charter school than high school uh, through, ele through uh, they, can hmm? they can get into both tech easier if they okay. go to charter school. Yeah, some people it say is. that. But it's true. I have two grandchildren that did that. Okay. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I significantly thank you for your attention and your purpose, and I God bless you all. Thank you.